All right, welcome to TV Weld. What we're doing today is we're going to do some bend testing. It's a common test that's done to certify welders. Uh, we're going to use a uh, 3 8 thick plate groove joint. We're going to use gas metal arc welding. Just a quick little bead progression. We're going to do one on our root and two over that, so three beads total. Uh, we're going to do two face bends and two root bends. So we're going to take uh, strips inch and a half wide and we're going to bend them in a jig. Face bend would be bent like this, the root bend would be bent like this, two a piece. Uh, in order to do a bend test, you have to, have to first pass a visual test. And what I'll do is I'll get the code out and we'll look at the, uh, the VT criteria and uh, make sure that it passes VT first. And I'll also uh, pull out the bend test criteria so you can see how to actually do the bend test and then also evaluate whether the bend test is acceptable or not. So uh, we'll get out in the lab and we'll get this going. All right, this is the visual inspection section out of the D1.1 structural steel welding code. And you can see it's got to be free of cracks. Craters have to be filled with the full cross section of the weld. The face of the weld has to be at least flush with the surface of the base metal. The weld shall, shall merge smoothly with the base metal. Undercut shall not exceed 1 32nd of an inch. Weld reinforcement shall not exceed an eighth of an inch. The root of the weld shall be inspected and there shall be no evidence of cracks, incomplete fusion, or inadequate, inadequate joint penetration. A concave root surface is allowed within the limits below. Uh, the maximum root surface concavity shall be one sixteenth of an inch. The maximum melt through shall be an eighth of an inch. You have to meet all of these standards before you can actually go into a bend test. Alright, this is the face of the weld we just did. You can see it looks pretty good. I'm going to try and get right down on it so you can see that there's no uh, nothing on there that will not make it pass a visual. Absolutely no undercut. Now what we'll do is we'll look at how high the convexity is, prove that it's not over an eighth of an inch. So what we're doing here is we got a caliper and we just extended it out one eighth of an inch so you can see the convexity requirement. Okay there you can see it's well under an eighth of an inch so we're acceptable on our convexity. Now we're going to take a look at the root. Right, here's our root pass. You can see it's got penetration the whole way down the weld. So we're going to try and zoom in on this again, like we did with the face. It's pretty uniform all the way down. There's no lack of penetration. There's no holes or nothing. No lack of fill. There's no suck back of more than a 30 second. So we're going to be good to go to our bends here, but we'll check the convexity first. Again, there's our eighth of an inch on the caliper. There's our caliper, and you can see it's not even close to eighth of an inch. So we're going to go ahead and what we're going to do now is grind the faces off, both the root and the face. And then we'll mark out our bends. We'll cut them, and then we'll bend them, and we'll do some evaluation on the bend. All right, this is the face, ground nice and smooth. A little tip on your grinding is you want your grind marks to go with the bend. So you want them to go parallel with the bend. That's why they're going across this. If they're going perpendicular, it's a little bit of a stress riser and you don't want any more stress risers than you need. Let's see if I can zoom in. And there's, a, there's a zoom in of it. You can see the, 
the line's going across the weld because that's the way it's going to bend. Now we'll take a look at the root. Okay, here's the root. It's ground nice and smooth, except for the tacks because we're going to cut a half inch off the weld anyways on the ends. And again, you want to make sure you're going with the bend. See how the marks are going across? So we'll mark this out and get ready to do some bends. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this. I'm going to use a mechanical saw, band saw to cut this. It's got, it doesn't have enough carbon content in it in order to harden. You got to watch that when you weld stuff, stuff hardens and fry the blade. I don't like to use uh, cutting methods like plasma and oxy fuel unless I have to because you put all kinds of heat in here and you're causing, causing distortion in the uh, atomic structure of the metal. So we're going to take this and just cut one and a half inch strips and uh, then we'll go over and get our bends done. Now we're taking our strips here, and you can see how sharp of an edge the sides of these bends are. So what we're going to do is get a grinder with a flapper disc on it or a sander disc, and we're going to make them nice and round because you don't want them sharp edges because it'll induce cracking. So we'll grab the grinder, and I'll show you what I mean by a sanding pad. This is the grinding pad we're going to use. I believe it's 36 grit. And it's just going to sand them edges down, make them nice and smooth so they have a nice transition for when we get into the actual bend. So we're going to sand these down and then we'll be ready to bend. Alright, see how smooth the sides are on this now? Nice and smooth, rounded. Instead of that sharp corner. So now we'll uh, go over the criteria. It makes an acceptable bend. Alright, this is the acceptance criteria for bend tests according to the D1.1 Structure Steel Welding Code. Um, the surface shall contain no discontinuities exceeding the following dimensions. Eighth of an inch measured in any direction. Three eighths, the sum of the greatest dimensions of all discontinuities exceeding a thirty second of an inch, but less than or equal to eighth of an inch. Corner cracks are a little different. You got quarter of an inch is the maximum corner crack, except when the corner crack results from visible slag inclusion or other fusion type discontinuities then an eighth max shall apply. Specimens with corner cracks exceeding a quarter of an inch with no evidence of slag inclusions or other fusion type discontinuities shall be disregarded and a replacement test specimen from the original weldment shall be tested so you can go get another one. You have to meet all these standards in order to pass the bend test. Okay this is our jig it's just a press 
with that plunger right there you can see the bend specimens in the middle the face is down so that's what we're going to be bending the face Here's our four bends, and you can tell that we've got massive failure on three of them. Which, if you have massive failure on any of them, you fail the test. Now, there's a couple reasons why. First, we're going to look at the uh, the brakes, and this just shows you that you can have a perfect-looking weld not bend, but it's obvious when you look at the brake why these broke off. So let's take a look at the brakes. Okay, here's the broken piece. We're gonna get right in there. See that parting line right there? There was absolutely no fusion there. So basically what you had going on was a great looking weld that didn't fuse all the way through. So you had a line of lack of fusion in the middle of the weld. That's why you do these. This was probably the beginning of the weld where um, you didn't have the preheat of the weld as it went down the plate because the last one we bent actually bent and was successful so it probably preheated it in the beginning to where you got at the end and it was acceptable but let's take a look at the last um, bend that actually is going to pass and we'll take a look at the cracks and, and determine why it passes okay this is the one bend that would pass we're going to take it and turn it here. And you can see there's a crack right there in the end. We measured that out to be 0 0.105 inches, which is not greater than an eighth of an inch. And by our code, it has to be greater than an eighth of an inch, or the sum has to add up to 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, so the one on the the one on the side there is acceptable. The other crack we have is a visible, there's a corner crack that measures out to 0 0.2. And we know according to our code that you're allowed to have up to 0.25 quarter of an inch on the corner unless it's from visible slag, which we're using MIG, so there is none. So this bend is acceptable. So now if you were gonna go and retest for this, what you'd want to do is increase your heat because by looking at all these why would one pass and the other three not you gotta change some of your variables in your welding procedures increase your heat that means turn your wire feed up turn your voltage up so that it blends in better and you get uh, fusion all the way through your weld All right, because we only had one pass the bend test, we're going to have to re-weld uh, this, re-bend it, start all over again. 
But really what's going on here is the procedure is wrong. We need to have more heat so that that blends in and you have complete fusion throughout the well. What we need to do is come back, add some more heat. Again, we did this according to our structural steel welding code, D1.1. Thanks for tuning in and subscribing to TV Weld.